everybody doing? So we keep getting this question about uh, why we're not using winch blankets while doing recovery work and warm winches says to use winch blankets. So why in the world would we not use winch blankets? And then he continued to comment about how great Ryan of China is doing on helping out the community, giving out free ropes and creating this hazardous recovery market out there because they just give out free ropes and equipment to anybody who's willing to go do recovery work with no training, no experience, no nothing. And this is a growing problem in the off-roading industry. Um, everybody can buy a winch nowadays. Everybody can go buy one of these ropes. You know, this is a factor 55 rope, 7 8 by 30, it's roughly 180 bucks. A lot of people can go buy these. But the problem is nobody knows how to use any of this equipment and they're not willing to spend the time and money to go take a recovery class or school or anything. They just think, oh, this rope is good. Let me take my 12,000 pound truck and back up 27 feet and full send it and snap the rope, damage both vehicles, and now it's the rope's fault. Um, I actually have a video of that. I'll upload it here. No one else can help. And if you can find them, maybe you can hire the AT. And nothing can go wrong. Oh, no, it all went wrong. And here's some pictures of a guy named Ryan out of Texas. Uh, he's one of the guys that runs in one of them free rescue groups to save everybody money. And he will brag about this. How safe is this? <laughs> and then we have people that have winches. And they have no understanding of winches. They have no understanding. So they'll go buy a 9,000 pound winch and it magically pulls 9,000 pounds all the time. Um, it's not how winches work. So that 9,000 pounds, I run 12,000 pounds on everything, um, pretty much never ever will pull 12,000 pounds. So that 12,000 pounds is max load, stalling load with proper voltage and everything from the battery alternator to the winch is in perfect condition max load at the very last wrap. You're almost never going to get 12,000 pound pull um, out of a 12,000 pound winch. And then there's a whole slew of information that you need to know about winching. Um, you know, how, how much does the winch lose for each wrap on, on your winch? And then you got different cables. So it could come with a 7 16 cable on there. If you remove it and put a 3 8 cable on there, you just lower the amount of cable on the drum by increasing the length, but now the diameter is smaller. So now those numbers are going to be different than if you ran a 7 16 so on and so forth. And these people are buying, you know, winches and putting them on Jeeps, and they have no idea how to operate them properly no idea how to calculate anything out and they don't know how much winching pressure they're actually putting on anything um, so the recovery market came up with winch blankets as a safety alternative to inexperienced recovery people um, so people that had no idea what they're doing could throw a few safety precautions out there and make things a little bit safer but the, I have a problem with winch blankets you need a lot of winch blankets to be safe um, so let's say this is a Jeep on this side and this is a Jeep on this side and you're winching in a straight line and we're talking about a dummy here that don't know how to use a snatch block or anything else. So they're just straight pulling it as hard as they can. They just keep hitting the winch and keep hitting the winch and they'll go in like three inches and then stop and then they'll go rev it up and they'll hit the button. They'll go in like three inches and stop and then they rev it up and they hit the button and it goes three inches and stop and then BAM! This winch cable breaks. Where's it gonna break at? Is it gonna break over here? Is it gonna break over here? Is it gonna break in the dead center? Is it gonna break two thirds, two thirds? Where's where it gonna break at? 
So how many winch blankets are you going to buy? So if you bought one winch blanket and it, you put it right here in the center, you put it right here. But let's say it broke right here. So this cable flew this way and then this cable flew this way. It was so close to the winch blanket that it just pulled out of the winch blanket and flew anyway. Um, so my recommendation on a single line, you need four winch blankets. You need one around two to three feet from this vehicle. You need one two to three feet from this vehicle. You need to find dead center and then two feet on both sides. So you need winch blanket, winch blanket, winch blanket, winch blanket. Four winch blankets on this one cable. That way no matter where it breaks, you're going to be covered. So now you run into a bunch of other problems. So now you got a winch blank here and you're winching in. Now the winch blanket is going to hit your vehicle. You got to now go up there and move the winch blanket. And then winch in some more. Now go move the winch blanket. Now I'm not saying winch blankets are useless. Um, I just don't see a need for them if you do everything else correctly. Okay. So if you're maxing this winch cable out, and how you're going to max this winch cable out is you're going to chain the back of your Jeep to a tree. And now you're going to winch till it stops. You just overloaded this winch cable. And you brought it to a breaking point. Okay. Why did you not run a snatch block in here to lower the line tension and split the load and then run the cable back to the tree? You just doubled the strength of your cable by lowering it 50%. You increase your pulling power, so now you're going to have less load on your winch, a less load on your line. Um, you're going to split the load between you and the tree, not chain your stuff to a tree and max out your single line. But there's a lot of information when it comes to recovery stuff. And everybody in off-roading industry wants to skip all of that buy a kinetic rope and then blame it when it fails or break a cable and then throw out winch blanket winch blanket winch blanket so on my particular jeep i'm around 5100 pounds in park with park and brake on it will roughly take 3000 pounds of pull to slide the jeep on the ground so my winching capability of my 12,000 pound winch will be around 3,000 pounds. And that's going to be my line tension running through my winch cable. Now how much pressure do I need to unstuck a vehicle? So there are formulas out there that you can Google. They have charts. Some people have them. Basically you're not pulling out the vehicle. You're pulling resistance. How to calculate out resistance there are formulas for that. So when the vehicle is stuck and if it doesn't run, it's locked in par and it's suctioned down, there's a formula for all of that stuff to give you a rough estimate on what you need to remove that vehicle. So if you're going to calculate that out and go, okay, I need roughly 8,500 pounds of winching force to get that vehicle moving again. I'm going to run a three-part line. I'm going to run for me to the stuck vehicle, to a snatch block, to a snatch block, through my soft shackle, and back to a tree, to a tree saver, to another snatch block, and back to the stuck vehicle. So now my 8,500 pounds of winching force is split between three cables. So here we got our minivan Jeep. Our F-350 with the big loops in the front that we're pulling out. We already calculated out the resistance of this vehicle stuck in the mud and how much it needed to come out. And this is our setup. We ran three parts of line. So our safe load rating on our line is 8,000 pounds. The safe load rating on the small soft shackle we have is 7,900 pounds. The safe load rating on our tree saver strap um, was 18,600 if I remember right. And then this has another soft shackle of 7,900 pounds. The actual pressure we're putting on this cable was 2,800 pounds ish. I can we'll calculate out the actual number, you know, give or take.
Yeah, it should be 2,833. Okay, so that's how much force we're putting on that. So this is the safe load, not the brake strength. In actual, we're going to put to 833. So we're well under the safe load of that winch cable. Okay, so when we run through the pulley, on average, you're going to double it. So you take the 2,833, multiply by 2. So this contact point right here is having 5,666 pounds of winching force on this point, which is still under the safe limit. And then this line here still has 2,833, which is still under the 8,000. And then we're going to have the same number here as we did here. So 566. Now this has a soft shackle here as well. That's still rated at 7,900. So we're still within the safe load rating of that. Hook to this tree saver, which is a safe load rating here. That's well under that. And then we're running back to here. Now this point is only going to have 2,833 pounds of winching force on it, which is well underneath that. So you were going to have, what, 2,700, 2,800 pounds of pressure per line um, running to the vehicle. That is how I do things. And if you watch my videos, you will see more parts of line in pretty much any of my vehicles than any other recovery guy. Those guys are running single lines, never using a pulley for anything. And you want to yell at me about winch blankets. So let's get back to the topic. 8,500 pounds of winching force to get that stuck vehicle out. So I run a three-part system and lower my line tension to roughly 2,800 pounds. Now you need to know what your winch cable is rated at. In a straight line pull, your winch cable should be rated... Um, how much is a working load limit not brake strength don't listen to Rana China and go off of brake strength everything that's labeled properly will have a WLL will lift limit or working load limit um, and then underneath that will have a brake strength so this soft shackle has a working load limit of 7800 pounds and a brake strength of 39,000 so safely you should not exceed the first number but if it does it won't break until it reaches the second number now that second number is in a brand new condition first time use being pulled in a perfect uniform function to that limit that's not I've used this 25 times, it's worn out, it's got salt water on it, it's in the UV, it's being degraded, I'm still going to go off of that brake strength. That's why brake strength is never an acceptable answer to what your strap is rated for. Okay, so if I'm going to be doubling up or tripling up my lines um, and running a compounding system, I start using the bigger shackles. I have bigger shackles for the heavier winch outs that we do. Um, but basically my point is, there's a lot of safety that goes into play when I'm doing recoveries that you as a viewer don't see. And you're comparing me to everybody else out on the market, okay? So, safety needs to start at the house before you go. When you get done doing the job, you need to check your equipment, make sure it's not damaged, make sure it's not frayed, make sure it's still in good uniform, sh you know, working shape. If it's not, it needs to be taken out of service and replaced. Sometimes I'll take stuff out of service and this one will no longer be used for this particular thing, but it will still be good for this particular thing. Like a damaged soft shackle will no longer be acceptable to put a snatch block on and do a winch out because you know one of these will be frayed but it still would be an acceptable use to put it on for a tow out now when i say tow out i mean already unstuck it doesn't run it needs to be pulled to the parking lot so 
you know, it's going to be rubbing the ground, the concrete, the chance of, uh, you know, the other driver running it over. I will use a damaged soft shackle for stuff like that. It is strong enough to do that, and even if it does fail, there's no, there's no tension on your toe strap. Now, I'm not talking about towing it up a mountain while they're stuck in mud. I'm talking like from the beach, straight down the beach to the parking lot. So while we're making this video, I'm helping out another guy. He's got a, a job to do, and he's in a different state. Send me a bunch of pictures in the situation asking how many snatch blocks he needs and how to hook it up and stuff. Alright, so back to what we're talking about. So let's say the stuck vehicle is here. My Jeep is back here. I'm standing off to the side with my wireless remote watching everything, listening to everything for a failure. And then I'm getting some hate comments saying I'm too close to the cables and whatnot. Um, so all that goes down to making sure you do the rigging setup right. So as long as everything's within your working load limit, everything is hooked up correctly, everything is in good working order, it's, it's not going to fail. Um, like I said, from my experience, and I've been doing this for about 15 years, and I've seen a lot of failures. I've called a lot of failures and said this is going to fail and then people tell me to piss off or kick rocks or oh well just let him try and if it don't work then we'll let you do it and then people are in a dangerous situation and stuff fails. Um, I'm not going to go in detail on all of those but, uh, but yeah that stuff does happen and that comes from experience and training. I know when stuff is going to fail just by looking at it typically. So they have it hooked up one way, that's not gonna work, that's gonna fail. We need to change the setup and do it this way. They tell you no, five minutes, it's failed. Okay, can you do the job now? Their way didn't work. I told you an hour ago it wasn't gonna work. Okay, but this is where understanding of your equipment um, comes to play. So with a steel cable, when it breaks, it will whip sideways. Sometimes it will whip up smack something and then come back out and then come back it'll whip sideways the other way you have no idea where steel cables going to fly so when you're dealing with steel cable making sure your equipment is in good working order your cable in good working order making sure you have your line tension low enough that you're not close to the breaking strength of your cable is much more important um, with synthetic cable, um, it's kind of like a bungee cord. If you're pulling on it this way and it breaks, it will basically go like this and bunch up into like a snake and go back and basically hit your bumper. It will almost hit exactly where it's coming out of the cable almost every time. Um, and I've seen synthetic cable break. A lot of people think you break synthetic cable and it just falls on the ground. It does not. It recoils and it snaps back extremely fast but it goes back in a predictable um, route or route or direction um, depends on where you're at um, so if you know that this cable is going to fly straight this way and hit this general area your danger zone is now much smaller so if I'm standing next to the vehicle 10-15 feet watching it with a wireless remote and the cable breaks and it's going this way I'm still in a safe area um, so you kind of have to understand all your equipment you have to understand your line tension where you're pulling from you have to understand your equipment how your equipment is going to react in the failure um, you have to understand what part is going to fail if it does fail you hear you know you're only as strong as your weakest link so you need to understand what your weakest link is so if I have this one that's rated at 12,000 pounds and this one's rated at 8,000 pounds and then my tree savers are rated at 18,000 pounds, what is going to be the first thing that's going to break? And then you understand if it does break, which way is that section that's going to fly? So you guys are saying that I'm being unsafe with no knowledge of what's actually going on. So. You know, I have always told everybody proper training and knowledge will go way farther than winch blankets. And before I put everything up, you have to use the right equipment for the right job. 
Um, so you don't want to use a kinetic rope like this. You don't want to use this as a toe strap. Um, they will wear out extremely fast being stretched and unstretched a bunch of times that would happen during a toe. So people are telling you use this as a toe strap or basically just telling you how to ruin your strap and it's going to create a failure in the near future. Um, the big thing that uh, we've seen recently was uh, Rhino China advertising these tie down axle straps that I think have a brake strength to like 3,000 pounds. They're, they're super light duty and they're meant to like tie down a vehicle on a trailer and they're showing you how to use them as a recovery piece of equipment and then they want you to put a hard shackle on it because they have metal rings on it and then from the hard shackle you need to run a soft shackle and then from the soft shackle you need to run to a tree saver just so you can leave the back of the car and then from the tree saver run another soft shackle to your kinetic rope to pull somebody off the beach like to me that is just stupid and that's going to create a dangerous environment because you're using metal shackles, you're using an axle strap, you're using a tree saver and a kinetic rope. And that's a lot of connection points and a lot of pieces of equipment to do a simple extraction. Oh yeah, it's stuck in there pretty well. That's the thing about cars, they're always tough, you know, there's no toe points. The more I do it, the more I don't like doing them, but we always help out. So this is how we do it when we don't have toe points. We got the axle strap right around the control arm, we run straight to a D-ring, and then a soft shackle, and then we're back. And then the reason that it's going to be a dangerous situation is, what did I talk about just a few minutes ago? The weakest link. What is the weakest link of that setup we just talked about? You got a 3,000 pound axle strap, then a hard shackle, and then a soft shackle, then a tree saver, then a soft shackle, and then a kinetic rope. So you got six pieces of equipment. The kinetic rope should be right around 16,000. Uh, the tree saver in a straight pull should be around 9,000. Then your two soft shackles should be 7,800 and 7,900. Then your hard shackle should be uh, like a four ton shackle. So you're talking about like 8,000 pounds. And then the itty bitty axle strap at 3,000 pounds. So that little axle strap is going to be the first thing to break. And being used with a kinetic rope that stretches 30%, just turn that hard shackle into a cannonball that's going to fly at the back of your car at roughly 200 miles an hour so yeah good job teaching safety there around the china um and if you're going to run around a control arm and use an axle strap just use the tree saver it's just like a bigger version of an axle strap just a bigger version and it would be much safer um, this is rated at 18,000 pounds, not the 3,000 pounds. You don't need to put a hard shackle in the end and then a soft shackle and then a tree saver. No, you just use your soft shackle right here straight to your tree saver. So you save a bunch of connection points. But the reason that Rhino China does not train you that way is because they're trying to sell them axle straps. And teaching you how to do it the right way in the safer way doesn't sell their product and, you know they're all about helping the community we always help but they'll be the first one to be like uh, nope and leave if somebody else is already helping you because they can't make a video for their YouTube um, and they can't sell any product because you know when it comes down to it sales is first with Rhino China not helping out others they want to make sales push sales and they'll even show you how to do it the wrong way to push those sales and you created a safer situation there than using axle straps um, another thing that we've seen um, quite a bit is people to use these kinetic ropes as winch extensions this is not a acceptable winch extension you should not be using this to extend your winch at all um, you should not be using this to tie back to your Jeep to a tree. It stretches and that is uh, a no-go. You need to use a polyester strap. A polyester strap is something like this tree saver. It doesn't stretch. This is an acceptable answer to a winch extension or to tie a vehicle off to a tree. It doesn't stretch. 
the reason the stretch um, doesn't work in a winch out recovery is it stretches. So this 30 foot strap will, um, kinetic rope will stretch 30%. So 30% of 30 foot is going to stretch 9 feet. So you need to winch 9 feet before this stops stretching, before it actually starts pulling whatever you're pulling out. And that 9 feet is that cable wrapping around your winch and then the more cables on your winch is going to lower your winch capacity so it, it doesn't work out very well and i've seen a lot of people tell you to use you know these as toe straps winch extensions tie it off i think one video i'm gonna try to find it i think he had like a hundred foot of this stuff hooked to a vehicle um and this is another equipment company promoting you know unsafe recoveries and he's bragging about he's got 150 rope extensions hooked up. All right, we set up for our first pull. We have 145 feet of straps running out to that big tree as an anchor. Single snatch block set up. This is the Rhino USA snatch block, 27,000 pounds. Rhino USA uh, D-ring shackle, 41,000. And then we got the big dog, the four inch, 40,000 pound strap. Now I want to point out that he's not telling you the safe working limits of any of these products. Oh wait, that's because Rhino China doesn't give you what is safe, they give you what it breaks at. And don't forget that minimum or maximum brake strength on a strap is when it's brand new in perfect condition, being used in a perfect situation for the first time not buried in the mud with sand and used it 42 times yesterday and now you're using it so him sitting here telling you the brake strength of this the brake strength of that the brake strength of this is just creating a dangerous recovery environment for everybody who watches his videos and then you watch the recovery he winched it and it pulled his truck to it and he had to change it up and then winched it again and then changed it up and then winched it again i think on the fourth try he finally started winching the vehicle out so for four winching procedures, all he did was stretch all the rope out. Um, so you need to use the right equipment for the right job and to keep everybody safe.